stop, 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 don't drink the rain water until you watch this video, time out, I don't want to waste good water, I want to drink it, <laughs> okay, okay friends, stop, and don't do a Mr. Hiller, don't be drinking the water before you watch this video, because there are some key tips that you need to implement before you harvest your rainwater. And one of them, number one, is some places it is actually illegal. Yeah, it's illegal to harvest rainwater. Can you believe that? But here where we live in the panhandle of Idaho, we're safe. So make sure you check, this is sad, your regulations to see if you can harvest it. Now, if you can, there are some key things that you need to do, some mistakes that you need to avoid. and. Starry fashion, we're going to keep it really simple because on our homestead, you know, we're all about frugality. We don't have a lot of money. We like to do it the simple way and we like to show you friends how to do it the simple way so you don't need a big elaborate setup. You know, just remember this. It only takes one gallon of water to survive and two to three gallons of water for hygiene. But as Americans, we use a hundred gallons of this stuff a day. That's, that's terrible. We're out there washing our cars and watering our lawns and filling up our hot tubs and our bathtubs and swimming pools. This is a valuable commodity. And when you are looking at the pricelessness of this water, you got to be smart about it. Okay, first let's talk about how are you going to catch your water? What kind of container? Well, we've got 55 gallon drums. We've got them all over the place. We love our 55 gallon drums. Just make sure if you are looking for any type of drum that you know the difference between the ones that you can drink the water out of, the potable, or you're just gonna be using, say, for watering the garden. Two different types of storage containers. So do a little research, go around your community, uh, see if there's re a recycling center that may have some. You may end up buying some at Lowell's and Home Depot, uh, but know the difference. And this is maybe where you're going to spend a little bit of money, but lucky for us, we got all our barrels for free. <laughs> so, you know, starry, frugal, free. Uh, then also think outside the box with rain catchment uh, systems. Look at this. I've got a real old-fashioned <laughs> water catchment system that even has a spigot on. And that's really important also when you start setting up your rain catchment system. Do you want a system where you're just going to take a bucket and scoop the water out? Okay, there's that. Or do you want to set your rain catchment system up off the ground so that you actually have a spigot and you can open it and have gravity fed? Or you want to pump the water out of the, the rain barrel, but you don't want the spigot and you don't want it off the ground. So you might have to make an extra purchase like a sub pump or a submersible pump that we actually have and we stick it in the barrel. And if we want to use the hose, it pumps out that water. Yeah, pretty cool. So there are a lot of options. And just remember, when setting up your barrels, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't need a barrel kit. You can get all the little pieces and parts right at your hardware store. So don't sweat it. Keep it simple. Couple barrels, spick it if you want, and you're ready to go. Okay, now we have to talk about mosquitoes. Ooh, those little mosquitoes, they love rainwater, and they love to lay their eggs in the rainwater. Those nasty bugs. And, you know, the other thing is, it's not just mosquitoes, but the debris and everything else that kind of lands on your barrel. So how do you keep all that out and keep your water clean? Well, we like to do things, like I said, very frugally here on the homestead. So the first thing that you can try is, this is tried and true. A bed sheet, a clean bed sheet. You just lay that right over your barrel. And what I do is I take a couple clothespins and that keeps out everything. Those, those mosquitoes aren't getting through this. There's no way. Then the next one is, if you don't have a bed sheet, well, you know, some people might not have a bed sheet. Good old fashioned cooking oil. Yeah, get yourself some, I don't know, poisonous corn <laughs> cooking oil or vegetable oil. It doesn't make any difference what brand or what kind. Just make sure it's a cooking oil. And all you do is pour that red on top of your water. And cooking oil isn't going to hurt your, your plants. About it. it is completely safe. And when we scoop it out, what we actually do is we just kind of push the, the oil aside and we access the water. But a little, a little cooking oil, 
Trust me, it's cooking oil. And then last is screen. If you really want to spend money on a little screen, you get the cloth stuff. See this cloth stuff? And all you do is lay it, look at that, right on top of the barrels. It fits in so well. There you go. Your water is now safe from mosquitoes and debris and other bugs. Now we have to talk about capturing the rain off of your roof because rain is actually very clean. Oh yes, the government says it meets its standards when it's falling from the sky. But that changes as soon as it hits your roof. And if you have a material like asphalt or galvanized metal or concrete, those materials mm, are a little bit more dirty than say just having a, a, just a, a metal roof. But don't despair, Starry's here to tell you what you can do to make sure that your water is not capturing all that bad stuff off of your roof. So number one, when the rain starts falling, don't capture the rain for at least 10 minutes. You know, it's like opening the spigot. And, and you ever have iron in your water? And sometimes you got to let it run for like a couple minutes to get all the gunk out of there. It's the same thing when it falls from the sky, hits your roof, and goes into your catchment system. At least 10 minutes of rainfall needs to be discarded or not even captured before you start saving that rainwater. So just a real easy rule of thumb to follow when you are capturing that rain off of your roof. And here's one last final bit of starry advice. Don't go too small with your rain collection system. Don't go too small. I showed you our 55 gallon barrel drums and I'm showing you a big old collection system right here. And the reason why, think about this, one inch of rain collects 600 gallons from a 1,000 square foot roof. Yeah, when it rains here, our barrels get filled up just like that. So <laughs> the bigger, the better. Don't go too small. So now, friends, watch this. So now, Mr. Hilder, Mr. Hilder, now, here you go. You can have some water. <laughs> now, you can drink the rainwater. <laughs> About time. That's all that. <laughs>